your not-so-conventional but indeed crazy romance comedy about a kid who goes through hell and back just to get to the love of his life, only to find out that love truly isn't as simple as you might think. Hey guys, welcome back to Flix Recap. I'm Luke Pelletier, and today we're covering the 2004 comedy, Going the Distance. Before we start, be sure to slap the like button, drop a comment, and of course subscribe to Flix Recap if you dig the commentary. And, as a disclaimer, this video includes my own personal commentary and analysis. It's not a substitute for the film itself. Links to purchase the film are in the description below. Let's get it. The movie opens up with Nick setting up a bottle of champagne and ice with two glasses and throwing on a vinyl before leaving his RV to go to a party on the last day of high school. At the party, we see Nick's mates drinking, and they all pick him up and force him to drink too. He makes his way to his girlfriend, Trish, where a producer seems to be flirting with her. Trish assumes that Nick is drunk and gets kind of upset about it, but they soon make up and head back to the RV to uh, canoodle for the first time. And things get steamy. For a minute. Actually, two and a half minutes. But Trish mentions it's the best two and a half minutes of her life. Jeez, backhanded compliment if I've ever heard one. Poor Nick. They're about to go at it again, but Nick's friends seem to be vandalizing the RV, ruining the moment for Nick and Trish. The next day, Trish mentions to Nick that she's leaving to pursue her goals, since the producer from the night before fascinated her and told her she could be the next big thing. Nick doesn't want her to leave, but gets on board with it and asks Trish if she would remain faithful. She says that she'll try. And just like that, we watch the biggest problem with a long-distance relationship rear its ugly head. In the very next scene, Trish flies off to Toronto with the producer, and it cuts to Nick's whole circle surfing, except Nick, who's busy sending Trish photos. Tyler, Nick's friend, comes up to Nick and tells him to get over it and to surf with them, but still he refuses. Not just that, but after Tyler tries to cheer him up, a girl seems to be having a hard time with her bikini straps and approaches Nick for help. He hesitates for a sec, but goes over to help her. She starts flirting with him, but Nick refuses her advances. Score one for being a nice guy. After a little flirtatious botanage, she reveals that Nick's parents tried to set him up with her as a massage therapist who's willing to do a bit more for an extra 50. Now, it bothers Nick since he's already head over heels for Trish, but it bothers me because Nick's parents would try and pull a stunt like that. That's just invasive, come on. The massage therapist then mentions that she's aware of the internship program with Lenny Swackhammer, the producer, which Trish is a part of. In fact, she's aware of all nine inches that come with the internship. This causes Nick to panic, and he leaves in a hurry. Next, we see Nick telling his friends that he's going to fly out to Toronto and ask Trish to marry him with a fake $10 costume jewelry ring. After he's done packing, Nick drinks with Tyler and Dime, his friends, to celebrate Nick's hopeful engagement. The next morning, Nick wakes up in a panic, thinking that he missed his flight. He rushes out of bed, only to realize his friends are driving his RV to Toronto because it turns out Nick's parents got him drunk with the bottle of alcohol they gifted to Tyler and Dime. Nick is obviously pissed and tells Tyler to stop the RV. After a heated back and forth, both Dime and Tyler convince him to continue on with the trip and Nick agrees. And the eventful journey begins. The scene cuts to two hot girls, Sasha and Jill, waiting in the middle of the road looking for an opportunity to hitch a ride. Now, being the womanizer that Tyler is, seeing the two girls on the side of the road, he lets his imagination run wild. Tyler and Dime want to let the girls on, but Nick seems to disagree. Still, two beats one, so Tyler and Dime win the argument, and the girls join aboard. They stop at a station for a breather, and Sasha goes up to talk to Nick since she feels they started on the wrong foot. But Nick is dismissive of her efforts. Meanwhile, Jill and Dime seem to be flirting as both of them are sucking. The shopkeeper looks at the both of them with disgust and trolls them by sucking on a cucumber. Back home, Nick's parents hire a marshal named Emile to sabotage Nick's trip to Toronto, so he doesn't marry Trish. 
probably more psycho than helicopter parents. Nick, Dime, and Tyler, along with the two girls, stop at a camping site, where the cringeworthy, flirty efforts from both Tyler and Dime ceaselessly continue. Alright, if you've made it this far, you're kicking back and enjoying the video. Now would be a great time to subscribe to Flix Recap. Subscribing is absolutely free, and it helps me bring you even more dope content. Okay, plug over. Back to the recap. While toasting marshmallows, Tyler manages to burn down the tent behind them, belonging to the two girls. The next day, Tyler tries to make up for burning down the girls' tent by offering wiki to everyone, including Nick, who is currently driving. Tyler even offers the girls to spank him, and he gets on top of the van standing while Sasha smokes a little reefer inside. The police car pulls them over, but luckily Dime keeps extra supplies for moments like this. Turns out it's the Marshal, Emil, who's pulled them over. After getting tormented by Emil, Nick dumps Dime's bud in the river, and he finds Tyler doing some questionable things behind a tree. But he just assumes that's where the sounds are coming from. They look back to find a bear behind them. At this point, I start asking myself, how much worse can this possibly get? Either way, after seeing the bear, Tyler pushes Nick and runs away. Peak friendship. Moving on, we finally get to see what Trish has been up to, which is serving coffee to Mr. Big Shot Producer while he smacks her ass. And we find out she has been putting up with this nonsense full time. The bear fiasco gets Nick hurt, so he accidentally takes Dime's concentrated fungal toxins as painkillers. Now, while some of us might be having the time of our life, this leaves Nick and out of control. Nick sobers up the next day with everyone taunting him about the show he put on last night. On the other hand, Jill goes and Tyler and Dime decide to take pictures of her. Trying to look for Tyler and Dime, Sasha and Nick make their way inside only to find Emil putting sugar in their gas tank. They chase Emil and end up finding his car. And the best course of action is to obviously break the window. They break the police car and find out that he's actually a fake. As a way to get him back, they scratch hand service for $20 on Emil's car and run away. They get back on the road and head for Toronto. After hours of driving, they stop by a carnival because they're running out of cash. Sasha and Nick seem to be getting along well as they talk about life, while Jill and Dime agree to get dunked for cash. Tyler, on the other hand, puts on a bunny costume and gets into a shooting game as a target. The marshal follows them to the carnival and ruins their van. Right out of Bugs Bunny, he puts a detour sign that leads them onto a train track. The group finishes up at the carnival and continues heading to Toronto. Unfortunately, Emile's scheme works and they take the detour and get stuck on the tracks and have to ditch the van with a train going full speed at them. Now without a vehicle, they find themselves in the middle of a corn farm. As they wander the area while picking off the corn, the owner spots them and aims a dime. Once they tell the farmer their situation, he decides to take them in and welcomes them to his home. He tells them that they can sleep in the barn, but they dare not go near his saintly daughter, pointing the Tyler as he makes a joke. Now we get a look of Josephine, the farmer's daughter, and surprise, surprise, she's super hot. She seductively looks at Dime as Dime tries not to get distracted. Josephine gets up and leaves, but she crawls back underneath the table and sits between Dime's legs and unzips his pants. The farmer and his wife take Dime's groans as him being willing to say grace. Dime says grace in a rather interesting manner, since he's trying to sound spiritual without revealing that his, uh, Lord is rising and may come again. Josephine then seems to make her way to Jill, who also can't stop moaning because of Josephine's skills. Well, you can't say this family raised a selfish girl, am I right? But Josephine's dad takes this the wrong way, which is actually the right way, and thinks that the kids are all possessed, so he kicks them all out. Emil, who is still pissed after the torture the kids put him through, calls Nick's parents to inform them that he won't be making it to Toronto. With no place to go, they make their way to a bar, where there's a $300 prize for being the best singer. So, 
Sasha steps up and goes on stage and mentions that she's going to sing a song for all these turd goblins and seems to be hinting that the song is about Nick from the way she's looking at him. Sasha wins the prize and gets enough money for two rooms. The two women with whom Tyler flirted with in the bar volunteer that he stays with them. Jill and Dime then decide to take one room, leaving Nick and Sasha to share the other. Nick and Sasha begin a romantic night kissing as she gets on top of him, and they bang it out. Meanwhile, the two women who took Tyler to their room tie him up with his bottoms up and spread his legs apart. And then they whip out something from their bag that closely resembles a carrot and ominously loop it up. After a very rough night, Tyler screams for someone to help untie him. Both Jill, Dime, and Nick walk in on Tyler and laugh. Everyone notices that he's on Nick's chest and start teasing him, and forget to untie Tyler. Later, they get on a train, and Dime bribes the owner with his personal stash of herbal goodness. Sasha tries to Nick, but he refuses, and tells Sasha that it was a mistake. A mistake, I should add, that he willingly made, so who's the real problem here? He tells Sasha that he has a girlfriend, and that he is going to propose to Trish. The train passes through Toronto, but stops at Montreal, so Tyler decides to make the best of it by visiting a gentleman's club. Wink, wink. Meanwhile, Sasha is just crushed and is deciding whether or not she should just go back home. Jill comes to talk her out of it and convinces her to stay. Next, we see the guys getting kicked out of the club, but then get on a jet with a group of rich folks that they met at the club who are also headed to Toronto. On the plane, Nick sees Trish on TV at an event which makes him even more antsy. At this point, it's just laughable how Nick still thinks he has some sort of relationship to save. They all reach Toronto at the event, and Nick immediately goes out looking for Trish. After some hide-and-seek, he finally finds her, and she suggests going somewhere private. The producer, Lenny Swackhammer, tries to chat up Sasha. He greets her in his own backward Neanderthalic language by smacking her behind, making her uncomfortable and disturbed, so she tells Tyler that she has decided to go home. Trish is about to Nick, but Nick notices Sasha watching and realizes something has changed in him. Nick tells Trish he can't do this, and then goes and dumps Trish for a random hitchhiker that admittedly he just met. <sighs> Trish then does what any sound person might do and kicks Nick in the face. As Sasha leaves, Nick tries to follow her out, but instead ends up being choked by Emil, who tells Nick that Trish is no good for him. Emil then tells Nick that he was hired by his parents. This frustrates Nick, but he doesn't care much since he's realized he no longer has any feelings for Trish. Next, we see the whole gang make their way to Sasha, so Nick could apologize to her. In the process, he gets punched square in the face by her brother, but still Nick persists. He basically stalks her and finds the place she's been waitressing at. Sasha asks him why he's there, and then tells him that she feels like she's a second option, and doesn't want Nick's pity. Nick tells her that he wants her for real, and they kiss. Now that Sasha and Nick are together, and both Dime and Tyler are in the ocean, Nick and Sasha both decide that it's the perfect time to moon the boys. So, in the end, everything seems to have worked out perfectly for everyone. Except for Trish, really. I mean, that's a tough break. And that's why you should never follow your dreams. A movie full of bizarre but hilarious scenes. Would you ever go through utter hell for the love of your life? Or, how far is too far? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the commentary, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next recap. Until next time.